everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 74. So the topic this week is we're going to be looking at a photo gallery page, something that we've approached in the past on CSS Tricks, uh, but we're going to be looking at it again. The design is going to be a little different, but the hook this time is we're going to be using a bunch of new technologies in order to create this photo gallery. So uh, 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 let, let's just bring up the demo right away so that you can look at it. Uh, this is what the demo looks like, and so uh, uh, I'm calling it the Editable CSS3 Photo Gallery because some of the stuff, uh, just take a look at the photos before I do any mouse overs there. You can see they're all at a little bit of an angle, they have drop shadows behind them, and then as I roll over them you'll see, well they turn a little bit and they get a little bigger and the drop shadow becomes more pronounced and then as I mouse off of it they rotate again. So just look as I mouse over these photos, look at the cool effect that happens. So we're going to be looking at how that works, and it's mostly CSS3, so just, you know, simple technology that a lot of browsers are supporting, not all of them, but we'll look at that. Uh, and, and this whole page is going to be marked up with HTML5, so it's going to be really semantic and nice that way. So we're going to take a quick look at HTML5 and what it can do for us here. We're going to be using a little jQuery. The, none of this stuff necessarily depends on jQuery, but we can do some, it becomes a little extra interesting with jQuery. So I don't want you to look at this and be like, oh, that's just jQuery, because mostly it's CSS3, but we are going to use a little jQuery just for fun. And then in the end, we're going to make this page editable, all the content on it editable with a service called PageLime. So it was Tom and Emil, and thanks guys, who uh, sent me over the code for this originally, and then I kind of tore it apart somewhat and put it back together uh, using jQuery instead of prototype that they were using, and uh, just you know cleaned it up and made it to our liking. And I'm going to be providing this code for you guys to download for free, uh, but the root of it is from these guys at PageLime, and then we're going to be using PageLime to make this page editable, and I'll show you how to do that towards the end here. This is not a paid ad for PageLime. They didn't pay me anything to do this. I just think it's kind of a neat service. I think you guys will probably think it's a little bit of a neat service. It's a little bit in the vein of something like Cushy CMS, if you've ever heard of that, where you can you kind of give it FTP details and you put some stuff in the code that makes these editable regions. Well, PageLime is kind of a step above Cushy CMS in that uh, it's a little easier to use because it, it gives you like it's like it's like you're editing the page right on the page. And it's pretty cool that way. So we're going to end up looking at page lime at the end of this screencast. So I just wanted to preface before we get started into this that check out the background how we started. This is just the background that you've seen a million times. It brings me gr great pleasure to have that background in screencast number 74 because uh, earlier this week I had a just disastrous data loss. Uh, what happened was I just had such a great start of the week. I was at Event Apart Chicago this week, and I was listening to a bunch of great speakers, and it was very inspiring. And then I came back uh, Tuesday night, and my computer was kind of beach balled out, and I went to restart, and it, my computer wouldn't start. So long story short, the hard drive is dead, and I take it to Apple, and they're going to replace the hard drive. No big deal. This has happened to me before. It sucks, but it's happened to me before. I'll bring, uh, but they quoted me a seven-day turnaround. Can't wait. I got stuff to do here, folks. So I ended up buying a new computer, a new computer that I really wanted anyway. So this screen is being generated by my new Mac Pro, which I'm really excited about. But I go to set up my new Mac Pro and, and do my backup from my time machine backup. And the time machine backup, unfortunately, is corrupt. And I'm not able to bring up the drive that the time machine is on in order to restore so oh huge disaster both my hard drive is dead and my backup is dead the double whammy so i wrote a little article explaining how it happened and just kind of a bummer just this morning i was uh, for like two days i was running some some software to kind of restore the hard drive that had died or the the corrupt file that had died and just this morning it failed and i'm like oh bummer but for some reason the drive was mounted so I was like, oh, wow. So it's still mounted right now. I'm still in the process of copying stuff off of that mounted drive. So yay for me. I've even recovered the CSS Trick screencast background. Uh, and I thought that I would celebrate by just doing a screencast quick here and just getting back on my feet as fastly as possible. So just a little aside for what happened to me. So I'll close that out. We're back looking at our demo here. 
I have this uh, all the code for this opened up in Coda like we always do because it just allows us to kind of go commando and work live and see our changes live right on the web. It's just how I work usually. So there's an index.php file. So the first thing we're going to look up is how is this thing marked up? What's this? What CSS is going on here? What are we doing here? See, the first two lines of this already is like, oh, God, is that nice. Look at that. That first line is what the doc type for HTML5 looks like. You could memorize that in your head, I bet. Open bracket, exclamation point, doc type. It's HTML, close, caret character. That's the entire doc type to, to HTML5. Instead of all that gook that's normally up there, this is already looks very beautiful. There's a head section where we declare the character set, the title for the page. Then I'm loading up three CSS files. So what's going on with those CSS files? Well, we're using a grid. This is a stripped down grid from the blueprint CSS. Uh, uh, basically, we just took the columns from Blueprint, so not a big deal there. We're not even using a whole heck of a lot of it, but that's just where this comes from. I have this container class set up, and the container class is what's known as the clear fix. So anything you want to, uh, uh, normally how you might use a, a, a div to clear the floats. Instead, you can just put a class of container around it, and it'll do it. I go back and forth between the methods, but we are using this technique. So that's the clear fix. If you don't know what that is, just Google clear fix. There's lots of information about it. And uh, base the basic reset and stuff like that. That's what's going on in the grid. Then we're loading this style sheet called, or, or the CSS file called HTML5. What's up with that? Well, there's just a few things in HTML5. We could have put this in another... Uh, style sheet, no problem, but just to emphasize that this thing is needed, we're loading this special style sheet. There are new tags in HTML5. That's part of the, the beauty of it for us as web page coders is that we're able to use tags in HTML5 that just make a heck of a lot more sense, like header, nav. What do you think those things are? Well, it's the header for your page. It's the navigation. It's the footer. It's an article. Uh, 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 those type of things are great. They make our markup much cleaner, but not all browsers natively support them yet. So this is to just make sure that those new tags have a display block because it kind of makes sense that your footer is a block level element. Like a div with an ID of footer would be a block level element. This is going to make sure that in all browsers that uh, uh, the footer is display block. These new things that make sense to be block level elements are block level elements. Otherwise, older browsers will just treat them as inline elements. It treats elements that it doesn't know what they are as inline elements. So that prevents that. But <coughs> uh, just to jump ahead, the master CMS or CSS file then is, of course, our CSS file that styles most of this page. Uh, so, of course, that's what that is. Now, what is this? What if this, These are conditional tags. If Internet Explorer, then load this bit of code here. We could go look at it, but it's not going to make much sense to you just by looking at it. The point of what it is is that all browsers, way back to IE6, whatever, will, will recognize HTML5. It won't be a big deal. Uh, uh, and it will it will see these things, and it will basically render the page okay. But the problem is, it won't allow you to CSS. It won't allow you to to target the header element in your CSS, which is really weird. You could, you know, we have we have a header right here in our in our markup. We could go into the 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 CSS and say header has a background color of black or whatever, and it just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't recognize. It wouldn't sync those two things up. There is a little bit of JavaScript that you can load onto your page. That, that, that fills that gap, that makes the, all these new HTML5 elements be able to have CSS styling to them. So that's what this is. It just makes HTML5 work with CSS in Internet Explorer. So that's what that's for. If you're going to use HTML5, you're going to be using this for a while until some of these older browsers kind of go away. Then we're going to be loading the jQuery library. We're, we're loading a thing because we're making a photo gallery. If you click on a photo, the, the larger version pops up. So that's Firefox. We're working in Safari today. We'll look at it in Firefox, but we're working in Safari for now. If you click on an image, the larger version pops up here. That's what that fancy zoom thing is. I'll include links to all of this in the show notes. Um, I don't know what I'm compulsively emptying the trash here. 
And then we have our own JavaScript file, which we'll get to later. So that's just, I'm just walking you through the, the, the markup for this demo so far. So then we have the header. Now already this is an HTML5 element. We already looked at this. Header didn't exist before HTML5, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Look at this page. Uh, God, I keep opening Firefox. What is this? Well, it's the header. Why don't we call it a header? Now we're able to in HTML5. Beautiful. What is this? It's the navigation. Let's call it navigation. <clears throat> in HTML5, it's called nav. So we have this nav section. We're using the container class, which is the clear fix, because this is going to be floated left, and this is going to be floated right. Now we know if you've been web designing long, when you have something float, all your elements inside of a thing are floated, the height collapses to zero. So that's what this container is for, is to do a clear fix to make sure that that doesn't happen and that the, the navigation bar up there uh, retains a proper height. And then we have section. What is this section? Well, we, you know, we're using some of this uh, blueprint CSS stuff here to have the proper span sizes and columns and yada yada. Uh, these images right here, you'll see there's an anchor link and there's some classes applied to it. They have hrefs that re refer to a different div down here. Now, don't get too freaked out here. This is just um, uh, uh, how that fancy zoom thing kind of works, right? We need this because this is how we're targeting fancy zoom in our JavaScript. We need this because this references another div down here that says what to open. So it's not always an image. Normally we might uh, reference uh, what image it links to here in a lot of light boxes, but this particular light box is able to not just open other images. We could put whatever we want in here. We could have web text in here, and that web text would open up in the light box too. So it's a very flexible light box. That's why these things are kind of reference each other in that way. Uh, and each thing has a unique ID, which we'll look at later. Uh, these things have titles. And uh, look, I didn't do a very good job here of titling them properly, but uh, you get the point. These pr probably should have proper titles to them. And then there's an image inside of the thumbnail. And each thumbnail, of course, has an alt image. So there's just a lot of attributes and stuff going on here. But what we're looking at with all that code is this area here, all these images. Then right below all those images, we have an aside. That's kind of another word for sidebar in a way in, in HTML5. We wouldn't want to call it sidebar because it's a little presumptuous about it. It just means it's, it's, it's related to this content in the section, but it's, it's kind of descriptive of it or has something to do with that content in some way. So we're calling it aside, which is really semantic and kind of makes sense. We'll apply some other classes to it from Blueprint to get things laid out how we want it to do. Then we'll have a footer on the page, too. So that is, of course, HTML5. We've made it display block, and we have some CSS going on to make it rounded and stuff. This is That's the footer down here. Pretty nice, huh? It's just a nice way to mark up content, but that's not what we want to spend the bulk of the time on in this screencast because that's just markup and that's not too exciting. What you're probably most excited about is this cool effect going on in the page gallery and the in the uh, as the rollovers for the images here, and then ultimately how we're going to make it editable. So let's look at the CSS a little bit. We didn't. We never opened up our uh, our master style sheet, so that's that's responsible for the bulk of what's going on here. So let's open up that. Not too much going on here, right? For a style sheet, not too bad. We're setting some basic fonts. We're saying don't have underlines on links. We're saying well, this is what we want our headers to look like, or uh, our header, uh, you know, tags. But then there's header. This is already new because look at that. That's weird header. Normally, you know, we'd be looking at something like header because we would have to have a div with an ID of header. But now there's an HTML or a, uh, yeah, an HTML element that just is header. So we're able to just s use CSS to, to, to target that thing. And we're just saying that, you know, it's pushed away from the top a little bit and, 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 and the paragraph has some margin and blah, 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 right? So here's the nav tag. It just it makes your CSS look so much different. I, I look at the CSS and I just it just looks strange to me because of these these words in here that don't have ID or class attributes next to them. 
but anyway, so that's the navigation, and the primary navigation is floated, uh, or is, is on the left, and the, the secondary navigation is on the right. Blah blah blah. Look at how all, look at how much stuff this is. Just you know, for basic page layout and stuff, and look at how little CSS there is for this all this fancy stuff we have going on with the drop shadows and the rotations and all that stuff. All that is uh, with anchor links with a class of Polaroid. We just used a class called Polaroid because they kind of look like Polaroids. Not, not exactly as Polaroids kind of have that thicker bottom border where you can write on it and stuff. But, but typically, the you know an image with a big, thick, white border around it is typified as Polaroid. So if you're not familiar with that word, it's just an old camera style. Whatever, it kind of makes sense. So we have some, some stuff that you may have never seen before, some CSS3 stuff going on in here where we said uh, uh, we have dash moz, which is our browser-specific vendor extension CSS properties here, uh, uh, transition and WebKit transition, and you see they both have the same value here, all 0 0.2 seconds ease in out. So it's saying... The all stands for anything that happens to this, like let's say on a hover event, which we'll be looking at in a minute, uh, all the properties. So the box shadow is one of the properties that we're going to change. Of course, that falls under all, but if we wanted to just be specific about it, we could say moz box shadow. You're just <coughs> referring to the thing that we want the transition to happen on. But in our case, we just want all of them. How long the transition is going to take and the easing. And the easing is like, uh, it's a little hard to explain, but, you know, let's say you're going to change something, uh, you know, from this position to this position on a page and it needed to animate that location. Well, animation, you know, move one pixel in one in, in a hundredth of a second, then move another pixel in a hundredth of a second and another pixel in a hundredth of a second. If, you, if it was... Uh, you know, that would just be a straight line. Like it would move, there would be no acceleration or deceleration. It would just be like, uh, 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 it would move in this, this straight kind of mechanical line. What easing is, is it, you know, at the beginning it'll move really slow and then it'll speed up and then it'll slow down again so that the animation just feels more natural and smooth like and, uh, uh, this is kind of a way to, to explain in English, ease in and ease out. You know, it's just a way to describe what's happening there is where you could have ease in or just ease out. And there's different like weird quadratic functions and stuff. It's just referring to what I just kind of described there. Then there's some, each one of these Polaroids has box shadow on it. So that's another thing that is going to require vendor-specific extensions, MOZ for the Mozilla Brace browsers like Firefox and Flock and stuff, and WebKit for the WebKit-based browsers like Safari and Chrome. Uh, we'll declare what color we want the shadow to be, what, so what offset, what top and left offset, and how big we want the blur of that box shadow to be and then some margin going on for them. So we've declared that we want anything that happens to this Polaroid to, to have a transition applied to it, and we have a, 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 a background, a box shadow going around it. So that's all we've done there. We've said we want the images to be 200 pixels wide, just in case. And then on hover, what do we want to happen to this Polaroid? Well, we want the box shadow to become a little bit more emphasized. So this is this, these are the same values for the box shadow, but the color, instead of being CCC, is 666. It's a darker color. So let's see. If we turned off the JavaScript, let's just get rid of our, our JavaScript here because it, obviously it's intervening a little bit and doing some extra stuff and did a hard refresh. What's going to be going on here? Well, we didn't... Well. <laughs> Just ignore what's happening below. We didn't rotate anything, but what what we have here is 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 this. You see how when I roll over them, uh, the the shadow just kind of fades in a little darker. Just that by itself. There's no JavaScript happening at all on this page. This the shadow kind of fades in darker. That's a really nice effect. That is just pure CSS. 
really, really nice there. So let's let's try another thing just with CSS. Let's go back to our CSS and say that um, we're going to do a transform when they hover. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this without looking. I'm just kind of winging it here. Maz transform uh, rotate like three degrees. So we're saying that when this image is hovered upon, we want it to rotate three degrees. So let's reload the page. So they'll load straight, but as I roll over them, they're not going to rotate. Come on. I thought I had that right. I was all excited that I thought I remembered how to do it properly. Let's go cheat and look in the JavaScript because I know I have the proper syntax in there for rotating. And don't worry too much about what's going on here. Rotate degrees. Yes. Maybe I s oh I did moz instead of webkit right and we're looking we're looking at uh, uh, in Safari, so we're gonna need both the vendor extensions for Mozilla and for webkit. Webkit save and then we'll go back in here, and reload the page and so you can see as I roll over them now and roll off they rotate a little bit, and they rotate back when I roll it off again no JavaScript at all, just CSS. So I'll go back into Coda here and let's say we wanted to do another thing. We don't have to comma separate this in the in the transform. We can say scale and then give it a, a, a value of how much bigger we want it to be. So how about just a little bit bigger? And we'll, this time we'll put it in both like it should be. Now we'll go into Safari and reload the page and see what kind of magic we got going now. You see not only do they rotate, but they also get bigger. So again, no JavaScript at all. Look at all this awesome stuff we have going here. And this is a good time to bring up, you see the drop shadow on here? You see how it, it's kind of like going on top of this, the drop shadow in the upper right here is kind of going on top of the, of the image on the right? Just right there is almost should be kind of like, with, without knowing that this was CSS3, or if we thought that we just did this somehow without CSS3, it would almost be like cringe-inducingly difficult seeming. Uh, and what I mean by that is, like, drop shadows like this are often, you know, you have to build, like, a table behind it, and you have to have an upper right corner image and a right image and a bottom right corner image and a bottom image and a bottom left corner image, and you have to have basically eight images that are able to uh, be repeated as necessary, and they, they load in the page, and you have to make room for them because, uh, you know, Images like that bump into other images, so you have to worry about the margin around that kind of thing, especially when you're not opening it in a light box. And just these bumping into each other would be problematic. And the cool thing about box shadow and CSS3 is it's, you know, kind of like the outline property. It's not a part of the box model. It can just have a drop shadow, and it doesn't, it won't touch anything else. This box is just this box. It ends right at that line right there, you know? And the in the in the, the drop shadow just is a drop shadow behind it. It doesn't it won't bump into anything. It doesn't affect anything. It just overlays when necessary. So just that alone. Okay, so this is just CSS. But I was thinking what would kind of be fun uh, is that when this page loads, if they were if it wasn't just a, a straight boring grid like this, not that it's boring it's just you know a photos and we're kind of going for that scattered photo look or something like that let's get rid of all this transform business that we just did in the in the css and take a, and, and and then we'll undo the the deletion of the javascript file we did from here and take a look at what we're doing in the javascript so none of this stuff is necessary it's just i thought it might be kind of fun to kind of randomize this a little bit and, uh, and, and and add some cool effects that way. So one line at the bottom here is just, let's call the fancy zoom thing. So that's the, the one liner that we need to make the pop-ups work. But the rest of this stuff is related to the polaroids in the random rotation. So let, before we get into this, let's look again with the JavaScript loaded, what happens? They don't all load in a straight grid. They all load kind of, of off kilter a little bit. So 
we loop through when the when the DOM is ready. We loop through each one of the Polaroids, and we set some CSS on the Polaroid, and we set the transform property to rotate, and uh, we come up with a random number between one and ten, and then we subtract five from it. So it's basically plus or minus five degrees. Like if it loaded a one, it would be negative four degrees. If it loaded a ten, it would be five degrees. So back or forth five different degrees. When the page loads, that's what gets applied to it. And you'll even notice, hope maybe, it, we'll see how fast it goes. They might kind of, they do that rotation. It's it's so fast that uh, <laughs> they like rotate before the images are even loaded, uh, but whatever. So then what, do we, what about these rollover effects? Well, let's, let's examine what's happening a little bit. As we roll onto it, you see it rotates a little bit. And then as we roll off, it rotates again a little bit. But it's not consistent. I'm not telling it, hey, rotate to the left two, two more degrees when you roll over. It's kind of random. You see, it as I roll on and off of here, the result of the, the roll on rotation is also just randomly plus or, minus, plus or minus five degrees. And as I roll off of it, it's also just plus or minus five random degrees. So it gives you that, you know, the... I guess the effect we're going for is as you roll over, it's, it's kind of like you're just picking up and dropping these things as you would in real life. You know, th you're not perfect. We're not machines. We can't pick up a photo and drop it again at the exact perfect thing. It's just, we're just kind of casually looking through these photos and setting them down again and, and leaving them off kilter. So it's just, it's kind of a cool feeling. You know, it's just a, it's just an effect, but I kind of, I think it, it works pretty well. It's just kind of fun. It makes your page a little funner to interact with. So how does that work? We call it what we call the hover function, or we wait for the hover function, <laughs> or even more accurately, I guess, attach a hover event to each one of these Polaroids. And when that happens, we're going to apply some CSS on a, basically on a mouse in we're going to apply the, the WebKit transform property again. It already has the transform property, but we're going to apply it again with a different value randomly between 1 and 10. And then when we hover off of it, we're going to apply it again with a random value. So there's a lot of repeat code, I guess, going on here. Maybe there's a better way to write it, but we apply the random rotation when it loads, and we apply the random rotation when we mouse onto it, and we apply the random rotation when we mouse off of it. So that's what we have going on here. A lot of random rotationals going on. And notice we're not using jQuery to do any of the animation. We're not using jQuery to do any of the scaling. We're not using jQuery to put these box shadows on there. We're just using a touch of jQuery to reapply some of the CSS and do some random calculations that CSS is unable to do. So the jQuery isn't doing a heck of a lot here. It's just kind of coming up with some random numbers and reapplying CSS where we need it to. So pretty cool effect. And then if you click, of course, it brings up the larger version. So we got HTML5 going to mark up this page. We have CSS3 going to make these effects totally awesome. I thought we would. Let me copy the URL and open it in Firefox so you can look at the difference between looking at it in a WebKit browser like Safari or Chrome and looking at it in a Mozilla browser like Firefox. Hopefully this will open quickly. And it's a little different. It's not quite as nice. So CSS3, really, if you're a CSS3 maestro, come on, Firefox, I need a window. Mm. There it is. Firefox does a pretty good job with CSS3, but it's not quite totally there with, with the nice transitions. It can do transform, which is rotating it and scaling it, but it doesn't do the transition yet. So watch as I roll over these in Firefox. It still does the random rotations. It has the box shadows. It does all that, but it doesn't have, it's not as smooth of an animation. So it's still very cool. I still think this is quite the visual reward, as like Dan Cederholm would say for progressive enhancement for Firefox 3, but it doesn't do, it's not quite as nice. It doesn't do the, the little animation, so no harm, no foul. Now, let's think for a minute, what would happen in IE that doesn't support any of this magic? Well, it wouldn't have the drop shadows, it wouldn't do the rotation, and it wouldn't do the scaling, so it would just be a flat grid of images. 
But big deal, right? Maybe we'd want to put a better rollover on it because the ro right now there basically wouldn't be any rollover effect at all on IE. But still, when you click it, it would still open up. It would still do this part properly. And it would be fine. It really, it would be fine. It's no big deal at all. It just would be a image gallery. And you click it and open a bigger version. It just wouldn't be as fun to interact with an IE. But, you know, no harm, no foul. So that's what we're looking at there that's basically what i wanted to cover but now i want to jump over and do the page line thing and look at how we can make this photo gallery editable with page line so we have this set up for a client the client thinks well there's only six images here that's cool for now but i want to jump in and be able to edit what these images are i want to edit the text along with it just very common client or honestly I do client work, you know, for the job that I work for all the time. We just had a request last week that was like, blah, 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 really simple website. It needs to do nothing, you know, nothing fancy at all. No e-commerce. There's, they've figured out there's 19 pages they've needed for the site. They've drawn a site map. They have all these requests. They're all really simple. The site is like a big 90s website practically. But then the one thing was, well, of course, we want all the editable content to be editable ourselves. We don't want to have to call you to update the website. So that's like, even if clients want hardly nothing at all, these days they want the ability to update it themselves. So does that, that means, for me, a lot of times that means going to WordPress because I know WordPress so well. It's a really nice CMS, and I'm able to teach clients pretty well how to use it. And for the clients that don't want to update content at all, I still need, it's still a smart idea to use a CMS. I could do a whole screencast on when is it appropriate to use a CMS? Always. So like I said in the beginning, PageLime is kind of one of these light CMSs as, as I, I kind of ended up calling it because it doesn't live on your server. It doesn't need a database. It doesn't need PHP to run. It doesn't need all this kind of, uh, uh, you know, you have to be you have to be kind of a web nerd to be able to install and use a CMS, really a traditional CMS, even like WordPress, as user-friendly as it is, it's still rather complex, I guess, overall. So maybe if you're paying close attention when we were going through the markup, you'd notice that there's a lot of uh, classes going on in here. And one of the classes that gets commonly repeated is the CMS-editable. And then each one of these has a unique ID too. So anything that we have that, uh, that's ultimately coming from page line. Not coming from there, but we've put it there for page line because it's, it's designating this area as an area that we would like to have be editable by page line. So let's go look at page line for a moment. <clears throat> we can log into page line. You can have a page line account or very coolly you can log in through any one of these services. And this is my page line account. So I only have one site in there right now and it's already set up to manage this site. But if you're setting up for the one uh, for the first time, you might say create new site and you're going to give it the URL to, the, to your site. You're going to give it the URL to the style sheet for your site. Give it a name and you're going and this is where the class name comes in CMS dash editable. You could put anything you want in here. You could put page line in there if you want to you know, be very specific that this area is going to be editable by page line. And then you put the home page URL in there and then you're going to have to give it some. FTP information about logging into your site. You're going to have to give it your username and your password. And don't worry, this is all a very secure process. You have to give it the FTP server name, the port, if it's S S FTP or not. And then like on my site, because I'm hosted by uh, Media Temple, I had to enter uh, uh, w in which direction, you know, when you log in uh, to the very, very root directory way down here, you know, Basically, I had to give it this, HTTP docs, to make sure that it got into the publicly web writable directory. So when if you're setting up a new page line site, you do have to go through that process of giving it your FTP information and, and information like that. But it's a very quick process, and you can just hit test, and it'll make sure that it's working for you. And then once that is done, I'll go to, well, I only have one site, so there's, there's not very many, but I'll just hit the demo and watch it. <coughs> well, I have some options here. I can check out the site map because you don't just be have to be able to edit one site. You can edit multiple pages of that site. I'm going to click edit site and it's going to open up the home page of this site. This is kind of a one page site. 
but it'll, that's just what we were looking at, isn't it? But now it's kind of within the page line frame, and the you know the big thing you'll notice is that there's these little kind of balloons over each thing that is editable by page line. So each one of these images is editable, and then there's two over here. Well, let's go look at that. That's in the aside, the, our HTML5 aside. Each one of these things has a class of so CMS editable. And it has a unique ID. That's one of the things about PageLime too. Is anything that's editable needs to have this class of CMS editable or whatever you set it up to be, and it needs to have a unique ID so it can keep track of it. We'll go back into PageLime and check out how easy this is. It says sample gallery right now. Instead of seeing sample gallery, these are my friends. These pictures are from my friends, the Boulder Acoustic Society, this killer band from obviously Boulder. We'll say this is the uh, photos from Boulder Acoustic. <coughs> society show uh, and, 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 and then I'll hit OK and you'll see <clears throat> that that has taken effect instantaneously here if we go back to our page it's not it's it, it, nothing has changed yet in our live page it still says sample gallery over there because we're just kind of working we're, we're working on our draft over here uh, in page line I can hit edit here and be like you know the show was awesome. You should come next time. I don't know. Whatever you'd want to describe this photo gallery as, you would do that. And now we got some text over here going to when we're done, when we're ready, when we've edited this page to our liking, we can go up here and well, we can save it as a draft or we can just hit publish. Boom, it's automatically it's using those FTP de details that we gave it, and it's saved, and it says you are viewing a page that was published today. Now if I go back uh, to here, live on the web, and hit return, the, our new information will have been published to this page. So all this fancy stuff we've been doing in the background, forget about that. You've set up this for your client. You tell them to come into page line. You've already got the site set up for them and they can you know, hit edit site and it will load up the page and they can click on different things or you can, I mean this is just as good for you as it is for a client, uh, and hit edit and these things change them all up and hit publish and you're done. So it's like inline editing for web pages that's just so much easier to do uh, than it is you know, through a CMS or through logging in through FTP and changing code and all that stuff. And it's hard to screw anything up frankly. Uh, you can do this, and you know, we could make something bold. But even if they did that, well, it's already bold, so this isn't going to have any effect. You know, to be able to come back here and your CSS, which they can't touch, is still solid and it won't affect anything. So you still, you know, they can't screw up the styling too much. But one of the cool things is, uh, you know, something it can deal with images in a nicer way. So one of the things you might have to do is, I think, I think there's a way that you have to turn on. Oh, it's in here somewhere. If you go to try to edit uh, a website and you don't have the images thing turned on, uh, it's not a big deal. Let's let's go to edit the site again, and I'll show you what I mean. We're going to try to edit an image, which is a little bit different process than editing text. Let's say I, I want a new thumbnail. I want a new thumbnail for this one down here. This thumbnail isn't doing it for me. So I'm going to hit edit, and I can just hit the change image button. And we have that image in here, but I'm just going to delete it. We don't want that image. We want a different image. I'm going to hit the Upload New Image button. Hopefully this will pop up quick. I <clears throat> There's something weird on my computer. I think I need to restart, but it's taking a while to open dialog boxes for some reason. It's going to open up a dialog box, which is going to give us the opportunity to pick a new image and upload it. So let's give it a second to do that. New five. This is a, a new image. This is not the same image. I'll hit select and it will upload itself automatically and give me the opportunity to pick a new, to crop it down. Let's say this makes more sense as a thumbnail to me. I think I, I like that. That's nice. I'm going to hit finish. And it's going to uh, uh, already, you can see below that, Let's see. I'll just I'll just hit OK. There's the new thumbnail. You can see that it's different now. I guess it won't be live yet, but if I go to publish, I'll just do it and publish and reload the page. We are able to manage our images. Watch that image change. New thumbnail. 
updated instantaneously. Beyond that, I can say change image, and I'm going to hit optimize, which uh, uh, it does a little bit more than that button might indicate that it, 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 it will optimize it, but it also give you the opportunity to change a lot of stuff. So let's, you know, let's do something weird to it just to, so you can see that it uh, pixelate. Look at that. Done. <clears throat> it will it will edit that, you know, it does more than optimize it. Obviously, you can add vignetting and you can crop it and you can change the, the, the colors and the hues and blurs and sharpen. You can do all this Photoshop-like stuff to it. Hopefully that will work. Okay. I've been known to screw this up before. I think I screwed it up and didn't get it to save prop or something like that. This is still the pixelized images. Let's click that. There it is. We're going to pick a crop of it. You can see how it pixelated. It just it changed the uh, uh, the full size, you know, part of the changed what it was being used in the library. Now we'll hit OK. And there's our crazy pixelized image. So beyond just being able to upload and reference a new images, you're able to crop it, and you're able to use tools right in PageLine to completely change the look of a photo through Photoshop-like tools. So that's a pretty cool feature. Now if I hit Publish, it will indeed use our crazy pixelated version of that thumbnail. So that's what PageLime is able to do for us. Make things editable in such an easy way. So big thanks to Tom and Emil from PageLime who kind of provided the original version of this before I went in and put all my own stuff on it. I'm going to make this all, just this whole gallery uh, able to be downloaded by you guys and you can go check out PageLime if you feel like it. And, uh, and that's about it, I guess. So I'm glad to be back on my feet and doing screencasts again for you guys. Let me know if you like this one or what. See you later. Bye.